Can I just stress this one more time? I have no current active projects underway. If you have essential important work, can you please do me a favor and not update yet? iPad OS and iOS 16.7 is still 100% stable. <laughs> I checked the version that I'm on, 16.7. I've now downloaded and installed by tapping on that one, 17.0.3, hitting the download and install. So that went and downloaded that. So if we come in here to GarageBand, first of all, and we load up GarageBand there, you can see there that the latest version released two weeks ago, this is the updated version, is 2.3.5. And at this point, I'm on 2.3.14. You can also see that we're burying the lead here because it's bug fixes and nothing else. And I've now gone and updated to uh, iPad OS 17.0.3. Now, if we do exactly the same thing that we did before, let's go to the App Store and look at that magic we have an update button here. So we are on version 2.3.15. We can now update to this. So I did all that just to prove and to confirm that the version that we have here, the 2.3.15, is only available in iPadOS 17 and iOS 17. Now, the reason that all of that is all super important is that if you have some devices that you're going to update to iPadOS 17, and, or iOS 17, and some you're going to leave on iOS 16, make sure you don't update your GarageBand or your Logic Pro. Because in the past, we've had problems where even if there's no new features, which is the case here, there's not a single new feature, sometimes you'll then go to open that project in your old other device that's still running 16, and it'll say this was created using a newer version of GarageBand or a newer version of Logic, update to open it. So it basically forces your hand and it makes you have to actually update. So we're going to go ahead and update these now because I now have all of my devices on 17th. So just to see what happens here, we're going to update to the latest version of GarageBand. Uh, GarageBand no longer quits unexpectedly when importing a MIDI file that uses a three, four times signature. See, I didn't even know that happened, but okay. Addresses an issue where GarageBand can unexpectedly quit while editing MIDI note velocities. Hadn't noticed that either. The swing menu now includes a new option called swing none. Did the swing menu in the drummer not have an option for no swing? So it was saying that the drummer used to not have a swing none. Can that even be? So the problem is I have no devices that are on there. Oh, I've added Kyle here. So swing. Oh, okay. I reckon it had swing none. So you couldn't take the swing off once you'd added it. That must have been it because, yeah. You could definitely add swing in the past, but maybe you couldn't unadd it. Anyway, apparently we now have it. Playback now remains in sync after changing a rose playback speed and then returning to the original setting and step sequencer. That's a very specific bug that I've never actually come across, but fair enough. The jam session settings no longer show duplicate entries for devices. Well, that's good for the four people in the world that use jam sessions. Oh, burn. No, he didn't. Corrects an issue where sustained behavior might persist even when switching. To... That's actually one I've been coming across. Have you ever had those stuck notes? Um, like a stuck MIDI note? Yeah, a garage band did have a problem where, um, yeah, if you switched it, it just sustaining the note, it just stays on and you can't turn it off, you can't delete it, you can't move it. So that's good. Now consistently shows a message when Bluetooth audio device is con connected. So consistent, so it doesn't just say Bluetooth device connected at the start and then goes away. Is that what that means? Let's, let's find out, shall we? Is this going to work if I get my AirPod and uh, connect it here? Oop, hang on. There you go, AirPods connected. Announce calls. Uh, I, no, uh, go away. I don't care about you. Using Bluetooth, you might notice a delay. All right. but does, So what does it mean it's showing up permanently? It's not showing up anything at the moment. So when I play it, I could now hear it in my ear. But it always did that, didn't it? It always actually showed that. GarageBand is now, yes, yeah, so the playing a three note chord, three finger tap, no longer triggers an undo. <gasps> yeah, so this was, this has been an issue for a while. So when you're playing an instrument here in GarageBand and you come in here, you might know that there's a, a thing you can do on your chords here where, with the autoplay, where you can tap it with one finger, you can tap it with two fingers and you can tap it with three fingers but sometimes when you tap it with three fingers or if you played like a
because there's a gesture, <laughs> because there's a gesture in iOS that uses three fingers for an undo, it would trigger that when you try to just play a friggin' chord. Oh, I like that chord. What is that chord? Yeah. So yeah. So it only really affected you if you were using a lot of three-finger autoplay or playing three-fingered chords on the keyboard.